Mr. Bale, are you prepared to proceed with your first witness? Yes, Your Honor. The defense calls John Shaughnessy. The people object, Your Honor. Mr. Shaughnessy has never been identified as a possible Your Honor, witness. May I approach? Yes, you may. Thank you. My client is on trial for his life here. He's always maintained that there was someone else in that bedroom. You think Mr. Shaughnessy can somehow confirm that? Your Honor, the Constitution of the United States takes precedence here permitting the calling of any witness to promulgate evidence of innocence. Now, that's clearly stated in the Sixth Amendment. It's also profound in Brady versus Maryland. Mr. Shones, you serve on the board of an organization known as the Rushman Foundation. I have the privilege to be an honorary board member. Right. Could you briefly explain the nature and purpose of this foundation? The Rushman Foundation was founded by the late Archbishop. Its purpose is to invest in projects for the greater good of the community. Greater good of the community. Now, would that be true in the case of the now bankrupt South River housing development? Yes. Could you tell the court why the South River project was abandoned? There was a difference of opinion as to the costs. Wasn't there also a difference of opinion between the investors and the late Archbishop himself? I don't recall. Well, what kind of money are we talking about here? I mean, How much money, Mr. Shaughnessy, was invested in this failed South River enterprise? $60 million. Why? $60 million. Wow, that's a lot of money. You and the Archbishop have been friends for, what, 20 years? I think it's safe to say that the two of you knew each other really well. That's right. Were you surprised at the content of that tape that Ms. Venable submitted? Yes, of course I was. So you never heard any allegations, charges against the Archbishop during that time? Not that I recall, no. No, especially since you were the state's attorney for the last 15 years. It would be fair to say that you've supervised all the prosecutions in Cook County during that time, especially the prosecutions of all the prominent figures. I also have a staff of a thousand of the best prosecutors in the land. Yeah, yeah, but as state's attorney, it was up to you, ultimately, to decide who would be indicted and who wouldn't? Yes. Yeah, okay. All right, let me, let me just take you back now. Let's go back to June 1985. Do you recall any allegations of sexual misconduct against the Archbishop at that time? I don't recall that, no. No? Do you recall a young man by the name of Michael O'Donnell who came to the felony review unit at your office? I have no idea what you're talking about, you Counselor. Don't, I don't, this is so confusing to me because I have this, this document here from the Chicago Metropolitan Police Department. It says that, uh, yes, Michael O'Donnell spoke to the supervisor of that unit over a period of two weeks, explaining to him the graphic detail sexual abuse he suffered at the hands of Archbishop Rushman. Quiet. And isn't it also true, Mr. State's Attorney, that you then decided that your friend, Archbishop Rushman, was not going to stand trial for any of it? He owed you big time, John. You must have been really pissed off when he pulled out of South River. What happened? What was it? He just finally said, I can't take it anymore. He said, no. Mr. Vale. You and your investors. Mr. 60 Vail. million reasons to kill him. You little cocksucker. That's it. Witness dismissed. Court's in recess. Vale. In my chambers, man. That's for Joey Pinero, you little shithead. 